Rahu exemplifies things. So what the hell does Ketu do? Why, why is Ketu there in the horoscope? Ketu represents things which we have conquered. So what's the need? We, we, we have done it, right? <laughs> why do we need? I mean, okay, we conquered something, we know it. So what, what do we do out of it? Hmm? Well, uh, or maybe there's something, there's something beneath which we don't see, right? So Ketu is a very interesting planet because it represents things which are not so interesting. <laughs> <laughs> like Saturn especially. Now, of course, it shows very interesting things. But at times, it can show things which we, which we don't like to admit. Because see, Ketu is the flag. Oops, I don't have a flag. <laughs> I have the Indian and the German flag, uh, but not in this room, unfortunately. Maybe I could have brought it. But Ketu, we know, represents the flag. So what is it? Flag. Now, whenever people hear flag, they think, okay, this is my flag. This is the area that I have conquered. It's my territory. You might have conquered it, but is there something remaining? That is what we need to ask ourselves. This is very important because, see, let's go back to Second World War. Short recap. <laughs> what happened? Great Britain was one of the so-called victors of the World War, right? The Allied forces, as they say. It won the war. But then what happened after winning? One by one, it had to leave all the countries, right? And of course, in India, Subhash Chandra Bose was there. He had instill this uh, the Indian National Army and then the Navy revolted and that is how we know the British left India. But you can say, oh, it's my flag. You know, British had conquered India or whatever. You that, That's up to you how you see that. And British won. The British, they won, you know, whatever, Germany or some other country, like Japan surrendered. You know. But then was there something remaining with the British? Uh, well, certainly not. The US became the next superpower, right? So what I'm trying to tell you here is just because Ketu represents a flag, it does not mean that you have everything with you. It is not a territory which you have fully conquered. It is a territory that you have conquered but it is not a territory which is necessarily full of resources that you like or that you want. Otherwise, there's no need of it, right? You, you have conquered something. Okay, well, very good. Fine. Congratulations. Be happy with it. So, for example, they say Ketu in the seventh house. Okay, I'm not saying this. YouTube YouTubers say, YouTube astrologers or people say this that, okay, you have nothing to do with marriage. So they say Rahu in the seventh will give you extra marital affairs. Why? Because you want too many, uh, you have too many uh, desires, right? <laughs> Which cannot be fulfilled by one person. So you need at least a dozen partners. Of course, this was this was said like uh, 20, 25 years back. Because since 20, 25 years, uh, the government has legalized uh, live in relationships and then people are like uh, living like dogs where every two three years or even after months you know they are like changing partners oh it doesn't work so what's the big deal you know we can change right but then they say ketu represents things which you have experienced so ketu in the seventh you have no interest in marriage this is what they say but you will see there is a the, i can show you 100 charts at least 15 to 20 charts where Ketu in the seventh has given more extra metal affairs than Rahu in the seventh. Why this happens? Now, there's another uh, counter argument to this. What is the counter argument? No, Rahu still represents your unfulfilled desires. Ketu represents your fulfilled desires. But the counter argument, why this happens, that if Ketu is in the seventh, why there could be more 
marriages then uh, rahu in the seventh days because they say you know this rahu ketu are like uh, they are dancing so one time you are in rahu one time you are in ketu so if this is the case then anybody who has rahu in the first ha should have similar lives with ketu in the first right because you don't know when what happens right so does it make sense well it doesn't right <clears throat> So then the most important question is how do you figure out the flag that Ketu represents? How do you figure out is it a territory where you have con not only just conquered everything but are you still happy with it? Are you okay? Is it resourceful? How do you figure that out? Well, for figuring that out, you need to uh, analyze the overall chart. That is very important. Because if you don't do that, then you will not be able to predict what will happen in Ketu Dasha. You will see a hundred comments. My Ketu Dasha is coming. What the heck is going to happen? All right? Mercury Dasha is gone. Ketu Dasha is going to come. Anybody in Ketu Dasha, please write in the comments. Yes, sir. <laughs> Anybody uh, starting Ketu Dasha this year? <laughs> Next year, write down in the comments. Yes, sir. It's coming next week. Yeah, I mean, I'm sarcastic here, but this is how people, they uh, comment that, uh, sir, it's coming. It's almost there. I'm just one month away from Ketu Mahadasha. Okay. <clears throat> but for that, you need to check the overall chart. Let me give you an example. Suppose your Ketu, Ketu is in the seventh house. Now, what does Ketu in the seventh mean? Ketu in the seven means that you had focused so much on other people that by focusing on other people in your previous lifetimes, you kind of lost yourself. So now in this life, Rahu has gone into the first house. What is Rahu? Self-obsession. You are you are a crazy, uh, you are your biggest uh, fan. You are your own fan, biggest fan. <laughs> Now, is this good or is this bad? This this, this is not that great, but it can be good if you see it in a good sense. Okay, I, I love myself. I like what I do. And I support myself. I am my fan. You know, I cheer for myself. So in that context, it is good. But if you are the other way around, oh, I do whatever nonsense I want and then I support myself. You know, then that is not correct. Okay. But suppose you have this. This is the standard dictum. The standard rule or standard uh, rumor in the sky. So which means people say if you have Ketu in the seven, you won't have a desire to marry at all. Or even if you get married, you will not have much happiness. So your desire from marriage will go out. Or even if you marry and uh, your marriage is okay, but you will somehow not feel too much, you know, romance, sexual enjoyment and all this, you know. So you will become a Vairagi. Okay? You will become a renunciate. <clears throat> So at the end, there is frustration. But the question is, if it's a flag, if you have conquered it, why is there frustration? Imagine you go and conquer something, you know. Oh, I wish I had the flag. <laughs> you go and conquer something. You are, what, what happens? Imagine you are a soldier. You are going and you are winning something, you know, or you win a new project or whatever. You are very happy, right? So you should be very happy. And ideally, if you are very happy, that area should be a cakewalk for you. It should be a comfort zone for you, right? So similarly, by that logic, if Ketu is in the seventh and it represents a flag, which means you have fully experienced it, then now you should say, oh, well, uh, marriage is like a cakewalk for me. Okay. But it doesn't happen. Why? Because the overall chart will tell you what kind of resources does Ketu have. Because sometimes it can happen if the overall chart is not supportive for marriage, then Ketu in the seventh can show that you were too much obsessed about marriage and because you did not obtain fulfillment, that is why you have left that area. You saw nothing there. You conquered it. You got married a thousand million times in your previous lifetimes and you did not obtain any happiness and that is why now you are... It's like uh, there's this proverb, no? Uh, grapes are sour. <laughs> Angur khatte hai, that, that uh, proverb, right? You, you tried something and you failed. Now you say, oh, that is not good. So I will not focus on it. Okay. 
marriage as an institution is only waste a waste of time that is what you uh, think so either it may be that you enjoyed your married life so nice and now you have like gone above it and you have become very spiritual you are like okay i want other things in life or you are like ah i tried marriage it that it didn't work so i'm not going that side so if in your chart majority planets are well placed for marriage then it means that if you have ketu in the 7th you have experienced marriage totally in its fullness okay and now you are moving on to higher aspects of life okay and now you are not very much interested in sexual union and companionship and all this but if ket but if majority planets are not supportive which means you know you have a very strong 10th house or a very strong 6th house and most of your planets are linked to the 6th or the 10th by conjunction aspect or by nakshatras primarily by nakshatras uh, then uh, it's like grapes grapes are sour right so i don't want the grapes why because they are sour because i didn't get them okay so so therefore before you make a prediction on somebody because see people will not come to you for consultations and to hear you know some philosophy they want concrete answers like they will they, they will not ask you oh, okay to is in the seventh what will happen they may ask you this but what they mean to ask you is how is my overall married life because they may be new to astrology the clients and they may think okay i have ketu in the seven and this is the only planet that matters so please tell me ketu is in my seventh what will happen in my married life but that doesn't mean they want to know about ketu in the seven they actually want to know how will it affect my marriage and because they have seen some video in youtube that the planet in the seven decides your marriage that is why they are <clears throat> inquisitive just about ketu but in reality they want to know about their overall married life right <clears throat> so if you see that most of the planets are giving troubles for marriage okay they are denying marriage they are connected to the 6 or 10 then it means that the same flavor which the person had in the previous lifetimes is going to continue and that will bring more bitterness you know bicker bickerness or whatever <laughs> because now the person will again feel that oh this is like to okay, get it it's marriage again uh, i have to go through this again so when you know you need to do something but you are not good at it then what happens you are disinterested you just do it officially <clears throat> and that is why you know you, you will find articles where they say ketu in the seventh you know person is not interested in uh, uniting with his wife why because maybe the the person is not finding pleasure that that is why the interest is gone okay <laughs> but now if ketu is well placed then this person will naturally not be very much inclined towards physical enjoyment because now the person will focus on other areas of life so that you can check from the chart because you also have to check the trines okay how supportive are the trines are the trines helping ketu fifth lord ninth lord is the navamsha helping ketu so if you know if you see that every planet is helping then you know this person desire has been emancipated i guess this is what they say right you you have fulfilled your desires and you have you are moving beyond it otherwise there is disinterest because of lack of fulfillment of desire so there could be disinterest in marriage or married life for two reasons so you have to find that in the house by seeing ketu all right so therefore please look at the overall chart see all the eight planets what they are saying for marriage okay and then if you see that ketu uh, if they are not uh, supportive for marriage then the person is most likely going to have a bad marriage along with that if he or she has ketu in the seven and the person will be very much disinterested towards the responsibilities because the person feels it's very familiar oh this same disappointment i have faced so many times in my previous lifetimes and on the other side if it is good then well there's familiarity and marriage is good or rather marriage is like not a person's priority not because it is bad but because 
he or she has other things to focus on in life. All right. Thank you very much. If you're new, then please like, comment, share and subscribe and hit the thumbs up. And if you want a consultation, you will find my website down in the description section. God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and he will surely help you to understand what Ketu is doing in your seventh house. All right. Thank you.